This is the second video where we're looking at the Google Resonance Audio SDK. In the first part, we went over the basics. And in this part, we're going to look at the reverb baking tools in Unity and how to bake the reverb in. Geometry based reverb baking enables highly realistic reverbs by ray tracing against static scene geometry. This reverb feature complements the Resonance Audio Room which models only box shape rooms, but can be configured during runtime. And the reverb baking is static. It can't be, uh, it can't be computed at runtime. It's, it's like light baking where it has to be done before and then it's, it, it can't be modified at runtime. This feature provides modeling of arbitrary geometries. Actual scene geometries are used, so acoustic char characteristics are better captured Flexible assignment of sur surface materials. Materials are not limited to, to just one per wall. With the room, you can only assign one uh, sound material per wall. And with the Resonance Audio Reverb Baking, which is access to Resonance Audio Reverb Baking right here, we can assign a different audio material to every single material that's used in the scene. And so there's less manual configuration. Try out the reverb baking demo. That's what we're doing right now. We've got the reverb demo scene opened up. So in the demo, there are spaces with different acoustic properties, a cathedral, a bathroom, and a cave. So there's the cathedral here, the bathroom, and the cave. In the scene, they are preloaded with results, RT60s. And we can learn more about that right here on Wikipedia. But RT60 describe the time it takes for sound in different frequency bands to decay in it by 60 decibels in an acoustic environment. Each probe is shaped as a sphere or a box. And when the listener enters into the shape, the baked reverb is applied. So there's some to create a reverb probe, which we can see, for example, in the cathedral, the reverb probes are right here. There's one at the entrance. There's one in this part. And there's a box shaped one that goes over that area. And if we want to make our own, we could just create a game object. And on that game object, Resonance Audio Reverb Probe. And then we could define it as. Let's get it out here. We could define this as being a box or a sphere and then set up its size only when visible we'll cover this option in just a moment and then there's gain brightness and time so that's how you create the probe after adding a probe you need to place them so place probes in acoustically distinct places probe one and two in the following example probe one and two in this room and where add probes where reverb is expected to vary spatially, such as in the transition between the two different spaces, probe number three. In general, the more reverb is expected to vary spatially, the more probes are needed. Modifying a reverb probe, we know how to modify the sphere, the box, and the size of that. And then the only when visible checkbox is to avoid enabling a reverb probe when the player enters the probe's region, but does not have a clear line of sight to the probe so you can just think of this as uh, ray of ray casting I'm going to use the cathedral as the example because that's what uh, Google does here and we can see with the cathedral if you select this oh, they have one at the back and the example is if the player is inside of this reverb probe outside so maybe outside of this wall over here, then they shouldn't be hearing the reverb because they're outside. Even though they're inside the sphere right here, they shouldn't be hearing the reverb. So if the player doesn't have a clear line of sight and essentially it's gonna be a ray cast, if the player can't ray cast and hit this game object, then the reverb is not applied. And that's what the only when visible uh, check mark is for. So if the character was right here, it can't get a visual line of sight to this game object. So the reverb is not applied. And if you were to come inside of the cathedral, 
right here, you would have a clear line of sight to that. And so, of course, the reverb would be applied here. And the only problem I could see with that is if the player was in a position like right here, uh, the reverb would be applied because line of sight would be happening through the window. And in this case, perhaps you could add a collider here, an invisible collider to account for that. Um, and then the ray still, would, still wouldn't get through that collider. So that's what the only wind visible uh, is for. Yeah, so that the reverb is only applied when the listener is inside of the region and has a clear ray cast to the game object. Understanding overlapping reverb probes. And so uh, the, the way it works is whichever probe is entered is the one that is going to be active. So if the player starts here, probe one is active. As soon as he enters into this one, probe three is active. And then as soon as he crosses this line, probe two becomes active. And configuring the reverb baking settings. Again, we're going to go to resonance audio reverb baking. And in this window, we can map the visual materials to acoustic materials. So here's all the visual materials and here's the acoustic materials. And I found the wording on this really hard to understand at first, but it says support for mapping visual materials to acoustic materials assumes the objects that look alike should sound alike. And if this is not the case for your project, consider separating one visual material into several and then map each visual, uh, each of these visual materials to its own acoustic material. What that's trying to say is if you have a texture atlas and let's say we have this entire cathedral on one texture atlas, one material, and on that texture atlas, it includes the walls, which are made out of stone, and the ceiling, which is made out of metal, which clearly sound different. The stone and the metal would reflect audio differently. But they're all they're, they're both on one texture map atlas, so they're so they're all into one material. What it's saying is, consider separating these visual materials into several. So, if your if we have a texture atlas for this entire thing and there's metal on the roof and there's and there's wood on the side perhaps we want to get the metal from the roof onto a separate material visual material so that we can apply a, a metal reflection to it and then we would have all the wood on its own visual material so that we could assign a wood uh, acoustic material to that that's what this is trying to say. And in the reverb baking window, we can select visualize mode. And what visualize mode seems to be helpful for is just locating where all these are at. So there's this has all the materials in the scene. So perhaps it's, uh, I'm not sure where this bath metal two is. I could, I see that it's red, so I'm gonna turn this on. And I, um, maybe it's this window here, or I'll probably see it in the bathroom as well. Obviously, it's this red area. So it helps me locate wh where these materials are at, because just by bath metal too in this sample, I might, I would have no idea where that is at inside of this scene. And before we do the bake, let's look at the reverb mask that's important so we can exclude a layer so the, the the in some case you cannot include all the geometry for reverb computations for example if your scene has smoke object then you might not want to include this in the reverb computation because it does not interact with the sound so to exclude game objects from reverb computation you can use one of these methods which one is to exclude a layer so i would put my smoke onto the ignore raycast layer and then I can tell resonance audio to not use the ignore raycast layer so when it computes the reverb bounces it's not going to look at objects on this layer and then the other way is to toggle non-static game objects reverbs are pre-computed and cannot change in runtime for this reason 
you might not want to include non-static objects such as a moving character in reverb computations. Another example might be a, a moving door. Disable the include non-static game objects option to exclude non-static objects from reverb computations. So you can see the include non-static game objects. Should non-static game objects be included in reverb computation? And the example in the demo scene is the bathroom door object is not static. So the way that works is we can see that it's not static. And if we go into visualize mode and we sel and we we actually deselect the door we can see that the door is not visible it's hard to see because everything's yellow but uh, the door is not visible because I'm in visualization mode this object is not being considered for reverb computation however if I include non static game objects now the door is going to be included for reverb computation and that's what this option is for include non-static game objects okay so that is the end of the documentation so I'm gonna go right back here to bake reverb to the probes and we've already gone over how to uh, in the cathedral how to create probes whether you want to use box or sphere and the cathedral has probes here the cave has probes set up and the bathroom has probes set up so once those are configured your materials are set up you're ready to bake you select which probes you want so if I was just baking the cathedral I would just select these ones and then I would select bake which is gonna bake that reverb in click bake to compute you're gonna get a log message that reverb baking is completed successfully take a look at the selected reverb probes in the inspector window there should be some RT60s for different frequency brands low frequency to high frequency bands appear left to right use the gain brightness and time settings for configuring post baking reverb properties for each probe and click play to hear the reverb in action so I'm gonna get out of visualization mode and reverb of course has already been baked we can see that by looking at the different reverb probes and we can see the RT60s I'm gonna press play and it should sound different in that front part of the cathedral than it does here or even right there at the entrance and of course you got the cave and the bathroom scene so I hope this I wouldn't call it a tutorial more of a uh, I, I, I hope this walkthrough of the documentation has helped you out give it a like I'll see you guys in the next video